welcome into The Scoop for uscscoop.com. I'm Blake Atlow here with Scott Schrader, and we are here at Annenberg at USC, a couple hours after Tuesday practice. First practice with Keaton Slovis in, JT Daniels out. Scott, what are your thoughts? Well, it's a big loss for USC. Uh, you know, JT had looked great in the spring. He had looked great in the fall. And in and, and that first half against Fresno State, I thought was very impressive. It's not like he was throwing a bunch of 35, 45-yard passes or anything, but it was very efficient, very fluid. There was a lot of rhythm to the offense. The running game was working. You know, JT threw the ball 35 times, uh, and then he went down. And, and Keaton threw the ball eight times. Completed six, but you could tell there, there was a difference in, in, the, in the, the way the offense was run. So Keaton Slovis is extremely talented. I saw him play in high school. We've seen him in the spring. We saw him in the fall. There was no question in my mind that he should have been the backup quarterback. So now it's just a matter of, of letting Keaton go do his thing uh, against Stanford here, which is going to be a tough task. But, you know, what, what have you seen from Keaton? I think that Keaton had a very, very good first two series against Fresno State, and that one touchdown throw he had was fantastic. Yeah. That was a great throw, great catch, showed off his arm strength, right? Obviously coming from you know, Arizona out of the tutelage of Kurt Warner, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever do it. So you know, all of those traits, the strong arm, yeah. the coaching, the great coaching he had in high school, those are all huge assets. He showed that all throughout fall camp. He was the clear number two guy. Yeah. So what worries me a little bit is the ball seemed to stop moving after those first two series. Yeah. Some of that might have been, you know, they were kind of, you know, this might be on the coaches a little bit. They were snapping the ball 15 seconds, you know, left on the play clock. They probably should have let the play clock run down a little bit. Like, yeah. It was like they were trying to run down the play clock, but then they didn't run it down all the way. So that might have destroyed the... They wouldn't have like a little hurry-up offense yeah. when they should have been running time off the clock. Right. You know, the way we were looking at right. it anyway. Right, right, yes, yes. And I think that, you know, if Keaton can kind of show off that arm strength, I yeah. think that Graham Harold they keep the playbook open because, as you said, that kind of quick-hitting, boom-boom-boom, air raid offense mm -hmm. that JT was running in that first half was very, very fun to watch. If Keaton, if they give Keaton the keys to, to do the same thing, mm -hmm. I think that USC can still have success. If we're just looking at Stanford in particular, because obviously without KJ Costello, I think yeah. that the Trojans can win. You know, he's, he's extremely poised and very calm. Um, you know, just even seeing him in high school and seeing him here at USC, you, you, you talk to Keaton and, and you see his, de his demeanor. You know, there's a lot of, he's very poised, as I said. Um, so, you know, he's going to go in there. Amon Ross St. Brown said that he can make every throw that, that JT can make. The difference is, is that, you know, a year ago, Keaton Slovis was, was throwing balls against North Canyon and, and schools like that in, in high school. Um, so, you know, he's going to be going up against Stanford, and you just don't know how he's going to react, you know, when, when they do play. You know, this is, this is a big, big, big Pac-12 game here for the, for the Trojans. So um, I, I suspect that, that they're not going to hold back. Um, and... So it's just a matter of seeing whether he can execute and keep calm. Uh, they're going to have to be able to run the ball. I do believe they're going to have to play some of the bigger receivers that did not play uh, against Fresno State. You know, the Munir McLean and, and Devin Williams absolutely will have to play. Um, they're going to probably have to, to add some running backs into the equation too. I don't think the two running backs are going to be able to carry the load. So it's a lot on his shoulders. But I, I, I do believe that at some point, you know, Keaton is going to be an extremely successful quarterback. It's just, you know, how long will that take? Right. And so that's the other thing that's kind of interesting to think about is, you know, kind of how long do you think the leash is for Clay Helton? You know, if, if yeah. the Trojans, if the Trojans don't beat Stanford, they get off to a one and three start, then you get Notre Dame, Washington, some of those other games down the stretch. That's one side of the coin. Obviously, that would mean that Keaton's probably struggling. Yes. The other side of that coin is what if Keaton goes out there and balls and the Trojans keep winning? That sets up an interesting dynamic sure. for next season. You know, yeah. JT's probably not going to play at all during spring ball. So that kind of right. sets up potentially an interesting dynamic. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot there's, there's a lot that can play out, and I think that's going to be part of the interest of, of this football season. You know, you have an extremely young quarterback. Um, nobody knows where, you know, this season's going to lead with him as the, as the starting quarterback. So, again, what if he goes out? Then, then you have Matt Fink as the starting quarterback. Where does Jack Sears fit into all of this? So... Um, you know, this could get very, very interesting, but I, I do think that USC fans have a lot to be excited about with Keaton Slovis. Forget the ranking in high school. You know, this is a guy that didn't go to camps. He didn't play seven on seven. You know, he was at a school, not a tiny school in, in Scottsdale, but they, they didn't play against the powerhouses or anything like that. So he was just kind of a relative unknown. But when a group of coaches were invited to see a workout at Desert Mountain High School last, last spring, you know, 
there were like 13 schools, 14 schools that offered him. Right. After, based off a of workout. So obviously there were a lot of coaches that saw something in him. So, you know, now it's just a matter, again, he's young and, and, and going out and proving himself. Right. Well, and Clay Helton referenced in his uh, post-practice press conference today, he compared Keaton to Sam Darnold a little bit in the sense that Sam and Keaton played similar, you know, time in, in high school yeah. with, because of injuries and certain things. Mm -hmm. and you obviously know what happened with Sam. So, you yeah. know, Sam, Sam only played a couple, a couple games before that full season. Yeah. Where he and he was a linebacker, yeah. too, at one point. Right, right. Yeah, very true. Moving away from the quarterbacks real quick, what is your biggest prediction for the Stanford game? You know, I, I do believe, you know, Stanford's got some issues as well. Uh, they may be down to their, their backup quarterback, which, you know, John Brown, who, who, who's Amon Ross St. Brown's father and, and has Osiris St. Brown uh, up at, at Stanford, you know, he thinks that, that Stanford's a better team than Fresno State. And he also thinks maybe the backup quarterback at Stanford is better than most people think. So, um, you know, whether it's KJ or the backup quarterback, who I don't know who the backup quarterback is right now, but um, I think it's going to be a close game. You know, Stanford is a ball control team. They're not a big play team, uh, you know, uh, and, and, you know, USC may have to run some time off the clock themselves. But, you know, it, it all depends on how Keaton Slovis is performing, how the guys are blocking, because uh, the run game is definitely going to have to be present against Stanford. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be one of those, like, 24 to 20 games. That's just kind of how I see it. I it usually is with, yeah. with USC Stanford, except you know one one or two times. I was gonna say I, I would probably agree. The dynamic of this year's game, you know, it's interesting. The dynamic between the Cardinal and the Trojans is typically pretty similar when they meet, which typically each season, which typically results in a close game, mm -hmm. as we've seen yep. the last five six years, really. Right. And this season is no different. Both teams are without their starting quarterbacks. Yeah. I think both teams have good receiving cores. I think SC's receiving core is definitely better, at least on paper. Um, I think SC probably has the edge um, in the running game based on what we saw from Vi Melipai and Stephen Carter, two-headed yeah. monster. Um, you know, but the one thing you always know about Stanford and David Shaw is that you're going to get a lights-out defense, fundamentally sound. You, you have a well-coached football yes, team. Yes, very well-coached football The difference, team. I think, this year is you know, if, if Keaton is playing like I, I expect him to, I think he's going to have a good game. Um, you're talking about a USC football team that is far, far superior offensively than they were a year ago. You know, I, I believe this offensive scheme this year, you know, if they would have played Stanford with it last year, they beat Stanford easily. So, um, you know, I, I, Stanford's got some issues. Uh, you know, they've got a couple offensive linemen that, that are down, and, and KJ Costello might be out. So, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot going on with both of these football teams, and it's just a matter of you know, how are some of these backups going to play. But Stanford is a well-coached football team. They, they don't beat themselves. Extremely well-coached. Well, 7.30 p.m., another late start at the Coliseum on yes. Saturday. So thank you so much for tuning in to our first quick-hitting edition of The Scoop. I'm Blake Atwell for Scott Trader. Check out uscscoop.com for more Trojans coverage.